So here's my final bead and I have to say I think my first prototype bead came out better. I had a lot of smudges here but what can I say I get nervous when I'm um, videotaping and trying to make beads at the same time. So take your time. I think it also really helps if you pickle your clear glass and wipe it down with an alcohol wipe before you use it. I, I have the feeling that maybe my clear had a little bit of, I don't know, contamination on it maybe. And, and then I went and I smudged my Murini when I was laying it down. And that's just the problem with working too fast. So this one came out great. I hope yours come out great too. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next class. Bye. This is everything that you're going to need for the class. I have a little Marva here full of my Burini. They're very, very tiny. So I need quite a few of them. I also have to pick up my Murini. This pair of needle nose pliers. I think these are jeweler pliers, but they're very little, so it helps to pick up those little tiny Murinis. As far as our colors go, you're going to need a lot of clear because we're going to make the main bead out of clear. This is a Fetre Super Clear from Italy, and I've got two rods of the clear and one commercial stringer. I also have for our scallops some additional commercial stringer. I have medium cobalt, pea green, and orange. So those are our colors. That's our glass and our tools and our Murini. We're ready to get started. Here we go. All right, got my Murinis on my Marver on my right side so I can grab them. And now I'm just gonna put a single wrap of glass on my mandrel and then another single wrap of glass right next to it. So two wraps side by side, only one wrap high. Um, you kind of want to start out with a very low, uh, low footprint. If you build your glass up too high, you're going to have a gargantuan bead. And this is what works for me. Okay, time to start placing our Murini. Now, what I like to do is I like to put a little dot of clear right on the base bead. And that's just because I like having like a little, I don't know, I call it a glue dot on my base bead to put my Murini in. It's just as handier than trying to smoosh it into that base bead. So now I'm just flashing the Murini in the heat. I'm going to pick a dot, get it really good and hot, and just lightly press my Murini into that clear dot. And then I'm going to go grab another one and heat up the dot next to the first one and press the second Murini in there. And now I go back to my clear stringer and the first thing I'm going to do is cover the top of those two Murinis that I just put down. I like to cover them right away because it kind of helps um, protect the Murini from the heat and I'm going to go in and right in between them I'm going to go ahead and put some clear because I'm trying to like fill in the spaces so we don't have bubbles and there we go so dots on top and dots on the side and then let's put down our glue dot again and then go get more Murinis and I'm trying to switch up the colors a bit here. So I'm trying not to put like red next to red or white next to white. Okay, one thing that's really, really important is you don't want to press too hard on your Murini. You really want to get that glue dot nice and soft and then press in your Murini into the soft glass. If you push too hard on your base bead, it's going to break your bead release. 
So everything should be very gentle and smooth and soft and you don't want to have to use all your muscles to push down on that murini. Okay, just putting my little blobs on top, filling in the little spaces here, trying to eliminate bubbles and distortion. And if you have a little space like in between, like right there, you can go ahead and get a really teeny tiny marini, teeny tiny one. And just kind of plop him down right in the center there. And let's go ahead and put a glue dot down. And I am trying to keep that base bead warm as well. So there's a lot of flashing going on in this process. Fill in some spaces here. Trying to eliminate bubble formation. Okay, that was good. Let's move on to the next ones. This is going to be a long one, so I hope you guys have your coffee. Your coffee cuppy, your cup of coffee. Oh, here's a brown one. And the hardest part is picking up this Murini. I, I used up all my large Murinis, and now I have just little, little teeny tiny ones. And they are tough. All right, down that one goes. Let's see, I think I got, here's a little white one. Oh, here's a little blue one. Keeping everything nice and warm. Heating up that glue dot, nice and hot and soupy, and then dropping my Murini. Oh, this is kind of nerve wracking. Deep breath, calm down. It's okay. Everything will be fine. All right, let's put those dots on. Like so. Like so. And fill in any spaces here. Now, if you are a little cattywampus and you don't like the position, just heat up your marini gently move it around without breaking your bead release that's good heating everything up keeping it nice and warm let's fill in some of those spots so nothing gets too distorted I'm gonna put a little teeny tiny one right in the center right there right there and I got a red one here put it on the side there okay good I got three down at once Oh, we're filling this in. Put the dots on top. Cap them off. Let's fill in some areas here with clear. I could have probably put Murinis in there, but you guys are probably bored by now watching me put dots of glass on other dots of glass cool all right we're doing good we're almost there you guys let me see what do I got I got a brown one right here it's kind of fat it'll take up a lot of space now because these murinis are so so small they heat up really fast and you might not have to flash them that much the bigger the Murini, the more flashing you need. But since these are so tiny, I kind of feel like all I really need to do is heat up that glue dot and press them in. And I'm running out of stringer, oh no. fill in the dots here fill in the spaces 
Fill in the spaces around the sides. I'm going to come out just perfect with my stringer. <laughs> A little one right there. Don't press too hard. You will break your bead release and then you'll go, oh my god, I just got all that burini down and now my bead release is broken. Okay, I think I can only put like maybe a couple more. Heating up the glue. Pressing that in, and you know what? I'm gonna call that one done. Mainly because I only, oh, look at that. I have a whole nother stringer here. Yay. Okay. <laughs> now we got all our Murini on. Let's go in and start plugging up all the holes and the spaces with my clear stringer. And I think I got a lot of them um, while I was working on this except for this last bead here. And mainly I'm looking around the sides. I know I got the centers pretty well, but you may want to just put some clear glass around the sides and get that stringer nice and soft. And then you can actually push the glass in to any spaces. And when you see areas that light up like that, that means it's not covered. So go ahead and cover it just like so. We're filling in spaces. There's another area that's not covered. So we're going to put a little clear glass over that. The uncovered areas, they really light up under the flame. You can see them pretty well. So you know exactly where to dollop the clear glass down. All right, that looks good. So now um, I think I've got it well encased. Let's go ahead and just melt it down. And as you're melting it down and getting the bumps out, um, it'll smooth out. And I think that Murini will even start to implode a little bit and swell up. And I do like to keep my edges here kind of straight, just like so. So let me go ahead and smooth this out a bit. Give my camera a little break and I'll be right back. Time to build up our bead. So I have my Rada Clear. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm just heating up this Rada Clear. And we're going to build up both sides. And it's pretty easy. You know, you're just going to put wraps down as many as you like. Now, from a design standpoint, I do like um, the oval shape because it kind of draws your eye to the fat part of the bead in the center. And that's where our Murini is. So, I'm going to just start out with one loop on one side, touching, touching the edge of that Murini section. I'm just building it up. This takes a little time. There we go. I think I'm going to work on the right side first and then we'll move over to the left side. So I got one loop of glass next to that Murini base. Let's go ahead and put another one. And I'm just heating up my Gather It Clear, looping it around. And I found maybe three wraps is a good size. So three wraps of the clear beyond the Murini on each side. So this is kind of a big bead. But I like big beads and I don't know why. They're fun. You got to have big bobbles. I like my big bobbles. Okay, there we go. A nice thick edge here. Let's work on the left side. I'm not, I'm not worried about shaping just yet. We'll get to that as soon as we get all the glass down. Mm, la 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 la. Talk amongst yourselves. Drink your coffee. 
pet the dog, pet the cat. They're probably wondering, Mom, you're not paying attention to me. There's one loop. Here's two loops right there on the mandrel. And you know what? This is the part where I say I need more file. Cranking up the torch a little bit here. Just so things go a little faster. Okay. All right, that looks good. Now, as far as shaping goes, I'm going to get out my Marver and I'm going to set it on top of one of my presses. I'm going to hand Marver this, mainly because it's too big to um, put in a, a roller. <laughs> that happens to me a lot. I have all these intentions of using my rollers and then my beads are too big. But that's okay, we can hand Marver. So I'm just heating up the left side and then I'm going to roll it gently on the Marver at an angle like so to get that nice tapered end. And then let's go work on the right side. Now I'm aiming the flame right at just the clear part. I don't want to Marver the Murini section too much because I'm chicken and I'm afraid I'm going to distort my Murini. So, we are working gently, and you know what? I can't believe it. I just got a really good shape the first time around. Oh my God. Yay, I'm happy. All right. Let me work on this, smooth it out. We'll be right back. Scallop time. It's scallop time, and I think I'm going to work from dark to light. So, I'm going to turn down my torch now. And I'm going to just get, this is that medium cobalt blue. And right on the edge where the clear meets the Murini, I'm just going to put dots in a line all the way around. Now, as you're doing this, it's kind of the same concept as if you want to lay a straight stripe. Keep your bead perfectly perpendicular to your torch and then that way you'll be able to lay down your dots in a straight line like so and now I'm going to go in with my little dental tool here and just kind of press them press them flat and as you're pressing you can kind of smooch smooch the dots around to make them line up with each other make all of the shapes consistent. It's interesting to me how you can shape beads. You know, it is a molten material, so you can definitely shape it when it's in that molten state. Just move your, your pressing tool around and you can get the dots exactly where you want them to go. Okay, there's our first set of dots. Let's go on the left side and put our next set down, down, blurt, keeping that bead perpendicular to the head of the torch and also keeping that other side nice and warm. So you lay down a few dots, maybe three or so, and then you come in and warm the other side up. <laughs> and then you lay down another bunch of dots and then you go heat up the other side. And here we go with the pressing, just flatten them out a bit. I'm doing them individually just because I want to be able to smooch those dots around if I need to. Smooch technical terms there. Very important. Very important to lamp work to have all of your technical terms defined. 
Okay, that looks good. Let's go to the next color. I'm going to use orange. <laughs> and I can see some of my Mirini is smudged. Eh. But you know what? I'm going fast because this is a big long video and I want you guys to see the whole thing. So slow down and your designs will be much, much better. As long as you keep your bead warm, there's no reason to work super fast. Maria, practice what you preach. Okay, got those ones down. The orange, let's go ahead and just smooth it. And they slightly overlap the blue. Slightly. You don't have to overlap them. You can put them side by side if you want. I was looking at like mom's curtains, you know, the curtains that hang over the kitchen sink with the scalloped edges. And their scallops overlap. Okay. Orange on the other side. Orange dots kind of overlapping. I'm putting the dot kind of right where the center of the orange dot is right where the edge of that blue is met. Heat up the other side. Keep it warm. Keep it warm. Keep the center warm. And there we go. And press those orange ones down. Wee, isn't this fun? How's your guys' day going? How's your week going? It's only Tuesday. Okay, and now the last row. Three rows of scallops. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I don't know why I'm counting. <laughs> There's something very zen and calming about putting down dots, you know? I just put them down, and especially if I have a lot of dots to do, I just get in there and go, ah, oh, ah, oh, this is so relaxing. The heat from the torch, my hands are nice and warm. Winter is over here in Las Vegas. It's going to be 90 degrees today already with the summer heat. Although for us Las Vegans, 90 is not hot. And I'm just putting those green dots over the reds. Like a so. And there we go. Be good, Maria. Take your time. Slow down. Look. All right. That looks good. Okay, one final flash and then into the kiln it goes. And I will show you guys the final product when it comes out a little later today. Okay, I want to give you guys kind of some tidbits of info when it comes to just annealing, especially annealing my like little display beads here. Um, so I wanted to show you guys the final bead and do the wrap up. So a lot of times I put my beads into a fiber blanket and I let them cool in the fiber blanket. Now, cooling them this way, it'll cool them down very, very slowly. Um, so you won't get any cracking, but the bead won't actually be annealed.
So what I do is I go ahead and I cool it in the fiber blanket and then I take it out and I clean it and I do my photos and all of that stuff. This one's actually my demo bead. I take it off the mandrel while I'm holding on to my camera. Sorry. <laughs> and then I go ahead, I take all my pictures and then when I'm done with the bead, what I do is I take it over to my kiln and I put it in a cold kiln and I drop it and it breaks. Um, <laughs> but I put the bead in a cold kiln and then I ramp up the kiln. I turn it on and I let it get to temperature and then I anneal it for an hour. Now, you want to put a cold bead in the cold kiln because if you put a cold bead in a super hot kiln, it's going to um, crack just like putting a hot bead in a cold environment. So when you're going back and forth like this and you're using like a fiber blanket, just remember your bead is not all the way annealed and you have to anneal it but start out in a cold kiln. Alrighty, that is my little lecture there. So here's my final bead and I have to say I think my first prototype bead came out better. I had a lot of smudges here but what can I say I get nervous when I'm um, videotaping and trying to make beads at the same time. So take your time. I think it also really helps if you pickle your clear glass and wipe it down with an alcohol wipe before you use it. I, I have the feeling that maybe my clear had a little bit of, I don't know, contamination on it maybe. And, and then I went and I smudged my Murini when I was laying it down. And that's just a problem with working too fast. So this one came out great. I hope yours come out great too. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next class. Bye.